nothing like HIV. There's no disease, no infectious disease that essentially kills everyone who gets it. The fear factor is gone. And yet getting HIV infection is a problem for any individual. The fear should still remain because it's a virus that kills people. There is this sense of complacency that it's better and it, it isn't better. And all these people, these 40 plus million people living with the virus, they will die of AIDS. Over the past three decades, humanity has rallied together for the AIDS cause. People from all walks of life have united across all social and economic boundaries, joining hand in hand for one common purpose, to end AIDS. And I want you to say the name of the person you're walking for. I'm walking for Robert Johnson. I'm walking for Rock Hudson. I'm walking for everybody that isn't here to walk for themselves. Statistics are growing, all except for one. That's the amount of people cured, and it's still zero. In theory, we could cure AIDS on a piece of paper. Maybe someday it'll come. I can't say when. Despite all the major progress we have in chemotherapy of those patients, none of these patients got rid of the virus. I don't think the pharmaceutical industry is very interested or invested in a cure. You know, I, I don't mean to be too cynical, but uh, the reality, I think, is that, you know, the situation they've got now, which is lifetime treatment with expensive drugs, that kind of suits them pretty well. A cure is going to require some, some very tricky and sophisticated molecular biology, and I frankly don't see it happening. Ever? Ever. I was born in 1980, a year before AIDS exploded onto the public consciousness. I grew up beneath its shadow like a child raised under the threat of the mushroom cloud. You might say I am a member of the first HIV AIDS generation. I've never known a world without it. This film is an account of my journey through the shifting sand surrounding HIV AIDS. AIDS has been front page news for nearly 30 years. Yet how much do any of us really know about HIV and AIDS? What is the difference between HIV and AIDS? H uh, I don't know exactly. <laughs> HIV is, 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 wow. HIV is his disease. AIDS is the disease. So, the two are completely different things. It's the same AIDS thing. is the actual disease. I, I don't thing. know, really. I don't know the difference. I know that HIV is less deadly. For me, there is not forcément. Enfin, je c'est vrai que j'établis pas de de différence entre les deux. What would you say is the difference between HIV and AIDS? Yeah, it's not a big difference, is it? HIV is just the starting point. It's HIV, it's a virus. The actual virus is AIDS. People around the globe were just as confused as I was, so I sought out the world's leading HIV/AIDS authorities among whom were the discoverers of HIV, the key White House advisor on AIDS issues, and the executive director of UNAIDS Global Response to the Epidemic. Meeting with these distinguished experts, I candidly asked, what is the difference between HIV and AIDS? The difference between HIV and AIDS is a really critical concept, and unfortunately it's one that seems to escape a lot of people, or just they don't remember it after hearing it. HIV is a virus. AIDS is a syndrome caused by infection with the virus. So you don't get infected with AIDS, you get infected with HIV and that causes AIDS. The biggest problem with the HIV theory of AIDS is HIV. There is a group of AIDS denialists that say that HIV does not exist and has never been isolated, and which is <laughs> as bizarre as it gets. We do not say that HIV doesn't exist. What we say is that the presently available data does not prove the existence of HIV. 
The reality is that HIV does exist and does cause AIDS. I mean, the evidence is incontrovertible. HIV causes AIDS. All right, that's a theory that's there. Let that theory be there. But let's have some other conversations. Let's have some other research. Let's have some other funding. Maybe something else is working here. No. Why nearly three decades since its discovery does there continue to be debate over HIV? Why is there no cure in sight? To answer these questions, I needed context. The past is prologue, so my journey begins with a step back in time. The National Center for Disease Control is reporting more cases of two rare and deadly diseases found in homosexual men. There is no apparent explanation for the outbreak. Obviously, this is an issue with great emotional fervor, but... How can we stay unemotional afraid. when people are dying every day from a disease the CDC has yet to name? For crying out loud, if the CDC won't name it, at least demand the press stop calling it GRID. Well, unfortunately, I have to take credit uh, for coining the term GRID, which stood for gay-related immune deficiency. We were seeing a cluster of gay men who were suddenly critically ill of pneumocystis pneumonia, which was the indicator disease of something new, and reported our findings to the CDC. I was the chief of the STD division at the CDC at that time when the draft report of five cases of pneumocystis in gay men uh, came across my desk for review. Shortly afterward, cases of a very rare cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma were diagnosed in young gay men. My first reaction was, this is an extraordinarily important uh, finding. The CDC was looking for something like that when it came along. They were looking for it already. They were hoping there was going to be a new plague because polio was over. The CDC's budget was getting dec decreased. This is back in like the 19th, early 80s. There was double digit inflation, a very high unemployment, a rapid military buildup, and a threat to decrease um, all domestic programs. And this led to reductions in force in the public health service, particularly the CDC. The Center of Disease Control, CDC in Atlanta, was under threat for reduction and even theoretically for closure. There were memos around the CDC that says, we need to find a new plague. For them to justify their expenses and their existence and their, make their careers, they have to find infectious diseases. We need to find something that'll scare the American people so they won't want to give us more money. Once people recognized that this was likely caused by a virus, the media attention went from no news coverage to the most covered news story uh, in history. People went from neglecting it to fear and panic. Maybe I can get it. All of a sudden, AIDS was a very fundable project, and I suppose the psychology they worked on was the fact that they thought, well, in Congress, you, essentially this is white, straight, heterosexual men who are the congressmen. And if they feel they can't fuck around without you know, being worried about AIDS, they're going to let the dollars out. And it worked. Suddenly there was a lot of money available for anybody who wanted to study HIV. And nobody ever looked back and said, why do we want to study HIV? Bob Gallo said on television, causes AIDS. The evidence shows that this disease is not merely confined to the gay community. I motion to call the disease Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, AIDS. In 1982, Dr. Harry Haverkoss was one of the Centers for Disease Control's epidemiologists tasked with defining AIDS. AIDS is, refers to a syndrome and its definition changes uh, periodically. AIDS is a chronic disease. It's based on its immunodeficiency. AIDS is not a disease, right? AIDS is a whole lot of different things. Depends on what country you're in. When your CD4 count falls below a certain arbitrary level, by definition, you have AIDS. You know, when someone's count goes down and then it goes back up again, it's, you know, politically they may still have AIDS. Medically, I don't think they do. If you develop any of a number of 
opportunistic infections or diseases, that puts you in the category of AIDS. We don't even know what AIDS is. AIDS is so hard to define because they change the definition of it every year. The definition of AIDS has broadened over time. It was revised in 1985, and then again in 1987. The changes in the definition have been political. Every time they change the definition, the numbers go up. The definition has changed many times. The biggest change was probably in 1993 which they then, you know, added the uh, CD4 count uh, uh, and HIV and, you know, so you, you could not even be ill, but if you had a CD4 count consistently below 200, you now had AIDS. A closer look at the Centers for Disease Control's documents reveals that AIDS numbers actually declined in 1993, but a retroactive definition change increased the estimates by more than 100 percent. The more diseases they could lump into this AIDS syndrome, S stands for syndrome, the better the chances are they get patients under that umbrella, the more patients they could catch. As time goes along, you know, definitions get used for a variety of, of issues, and some of those are not based solely on scientific decisions, but politics and capitalism and reimbursement comes into play. For example, a person with hepatitis C, even say here in San Francisco, if you've got hepatitis C and only hepatitis C, you're, you're shit out of luck. Having an AIDS diagnosis, you know, I get a free apartment. The city of San Diego pays my apartment. I can um, have the state of California pay for many um, medications related to HIV. Uh, I get Social Security benefits. I can get discounts on my supplements at the local health food store. I also get food stamps and in-home supportive cleaning services. So I was basically a healthy person walking around, and yeah, I had all these wonderful little perks, you know? You get all these benefits, I mean, that, that we fought for and got. Uh, but the end result has been a sort of an imbalance. I mean, we, we succeeded, and I'm glad we did, but it is a little unfair. Politics, insurance, capitalism, benefits, you can be sick or healthy. I never would have thought that AIDS was so convoluted. <laughs> right, right. Well, as I said, that, 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 that has changed. How you define that scientifically has changed quite often. Uh, which just makes it difficult to, you know, for, for the lay people to understand. It makes it difficult for me to interpret the numbers. Africa is purported to have the highest incidence of AIDS cases on the planet. So I trekked to South Africa to witness firsthand the impact of AIDS on that troubled continent. Around 10 million of South Africa's 48 million people have been reported to have AIDS. It's only a 10 minute drive from Cape Town's pristine modern airport to the squalor of neighborhoods said to be ravaged by AIDS. All the facts on HIV and AIDS with Griselda on Metro FM Talk. It's World AIDS Day. There are functions, there are gatherings. The international theme is Stop AIDS, Stop HIV and AIDS. Keep the promise. So many years later, we keep saying the same things, HIV, HIV, HIV. And yet, Each time I hear words like HIV and AIDS, I just want to pull my hair out. I'm just so fatigued about how we've packaged the messaging. All we talk about is AIDS. It's a sex virus. You have to use condoms or you die. It's a sick and sad message. People can't think outside AIDS anymore. And it's just a shocking, sad reality. The first AIDS meeting on the continent of Africa was in 1985 in Bangui. We were there with a few people who had experience on AIDS in Africa. And one of our problems was, how can you diagnose uh, AIDS in Africa in the absence of very sophisticated laboratory support? Even though by 1985 there was an HIV test, most of Africa didn't have access to it. So one of the things that we did in that meeting was to sit down and hash out the so-called Bangui criteria 
for the diagnosis of AIDS in Africa. The idea was what would be a simple way for a clinician to look